All right. Uh, thank you for that. And welcome back to the show. Rick Tittle with you coast to coast and around the world on American Forces Radio Network. It's our pleasure to welcome to the show filmmakers David Creed and Mark Kenna. They're here to talk about their new film called uh, Sacrilege, which is releasing all over North America today. Uh, DVD, uh, video, on demand, all that good stuff. And uh, David uh, wrote and directed it. Mark produced it. Let's start with you, David, because I'm just looking at the poster. It says sacrilege. It's got a girl almost like in a crucifix pose. There's like a pentagram. It's bad blood films. It's devil works. I'm already scared. <laughs> Good. <laughs> <laughs> what was the genesis behind this project? Uh, I mean, Mark and I have been in the industry for you know, a few, a few years and uh, we kind of uh, got together a kind of a mutual love for uh, making movies and making horror movies. Um, and we wanted to, wanted to find a project that we could do on a small budget for our first film. Um, so yeah, I've already, I've, as a writer previously, and we uh, uh, kind of, I pitched Mark some ideas uh, and then we sort of pitched in with uh, which ones, you know, we could shoot fairly local to us um, on, a, on a reasonable budget. And um, yeah, they, we, we come up with a project that way. So Mark, how much of it when you're making a movie like this, do you want a, a brand new storyline and interesting plot twists and great acting? And then how much of it is kind of a, you know, TNA sexploitation type of slasher too? Uh, for me, it was um, having a great concept um, and uh, and having that first proof of concept project for Bad Blood Films. We have a, a slate of 16 projects here, so it's just getting the first one made, getting it out there, letting people know that we're, you know, raising the bar of indie movies and, uh, and having some fun. And so, David, when it's your baby like this, you wrote and directed it, do you end up second guessing yourself or do you have the steely resolve with your convictions? <laughs> <laughs> uh, probably all of the above uh yeah well i guess you know you you always try and make the best movie that you can and surround yourself with the right people um you know and they help you bring that kind of thing to life really and and, and having uh, the right relationship with a producer um is invaluable because you know they've got your back you know so as much as you can say right well this is what i want to do you know like, like from from the very start it's like right i actually want to set a guy on fire you know, I don't really want to use CG. Can we do that? You know, and um, yeah, Mark was like, yeah, we can do that. OK, right. And then off he goes and figures out how we can do it. And if we can do it on the budget and and then lets me know what we can and what we can't do. Um, you know, some of the things that we, we weren't able to do. Um, but a lot of it, you know, we managed to we managed to get in. But yeah, sometimes you have to kind of second guess yourself and say, right, I want, you know, a, flat, a thousand flying monkeys when, you know, we can only afford one. So. <laughs> Right. Now, those those are on a shoot in Croydon. You'd have to wait for those, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Anything's possible, right, Dave? <laughs> so, Mark, uh, what about your locations? Did you film this in uh, Blighty? Yeah, uh, we have a wonderful countryside for uh, for a very small island here, the other side of the pond. But, um, you know, Forest of Dean, which is here in the southwest where Bad Blood Films are based, so out of London, which is quite unusual, but um, yeah, it's it's just a wonderful location. We found this isolated sort of location um, in the Forest of Dean, and uh, and we just fell in love with it. You know, we wanted these drone aerial shots and a big opening, and set a guy on fire, and we found some wonderful locations. This that was actually very isolated, um, so all the the cast and crew we actually lived on set for for the eighteen days of the shoot, and. Uh, and I think it was it felt more like a holiday for a lot of the casting crew, uh, even though we fed them well and uh, they worked, you know, late uh, hours and half of it was in the darkness um, and cold because it was in May. Um, you know, it was, it was great. It was that sort of film family you'd expect for your first production. So uh, we've kind of definitely set the bar and looking forward to getting the team back and making the next project. I spent a lot of time in Hertfordshire and I want to say I was on the fringes of the Forest of Dean or is that more Gloucestershire? Yeah, Gloucestershire, but Hertfordshire is also very beautiful. There's lots of beautiful pockets of locations here in the UK on the doorstep. No doubt. I'm speaking with David Creed and Mark Kenna, the new film Sacrilege. So, uh, David, uh, a pagan, this is what we can reveal, a pagan cult horror follows a group of young women during celebrations at the summer solstice 
as they are offered up as a sacrifice to a mysterious pagan goddess who has the ability to sense their greatest fears using this power against them. She turns their nightmares into a horrifying reality. Um, what were some of the challenges you had uh, as you uh, went through the film, uh, David? What, what were the easy things and what were maybe the hard things? Uh, yeah, wow, great question. Uh, the, the easy stuff was, was actually working with the crew and the actors. They were, they're all seasoned professionals. So uh, they were kind of on this, you know, on this project because they wanted to be. So that, that was easy because they were all, you know, fantastic at their job. So, that, so there was no difficulty there. Um, the hardest stuff was definitely because we had a mixture of um, practical effects um, and some CG. So the, the bugs that attack one of the cast in the movie, um, yeah, they're, they're obviously CG. Uh, so that was quite hard because I'd never, I'd never done CG to that um, degree before. So it was very handy having a um, uh, visual effects supervisor in James Price, who was able to kind of help me and guide me into kind of, you know, how, what sort of shots that I would need. And, you know, then obviously talk to the actress and get her to pretend, right, okay, so there's a bug there and it's gonna go all the way up your hand here and then it's gonna jump over here. And, you know, kind of trying to follow her eye line to make sure it was in the right way. So that was, uh, that was definitely the most challenging part, I think. Interesting. And Mark, out here in California, it seems like every city has their own film commission. We're kind of used to this uh, Tinseltown stuff. But for you, did you have any issues with local constabulary or anyone else like saying, what are you doing here on my farm? <laughs> no, um, we the house was a, an isolated location about a kilometer from anything. So as the crew sort of 16 cars or driving down this very ominous sort of road that led to nowhere, there was this wonderful sort of uh, house that uh, uh, the, the places uh, the film filmed at. Um, so it was private land. So for us, it was, um, you know, the drone stuff is on private land. So even though we're filming the Farsa Dean, we're actually, you know, within the, uh, um, the regulations of what we should have been. Um, so, yeah, it, it, we didn't have much issue. We were going to shoot like at Chepstow Racecourse. Um, but, um, yeah, we, we found, it, uh, we found a, a better location um, um, in the southwest that, that worked really, really well. Um, so, yeah, we didn't didn't have many issues. I think as a as a first time production as Bad Blood Films, you know, we had lots of, um, you know, challenges that sprung up. But once again, as Dave said, the team was just absolutely on it. So uh, any any issues we had in real time were sort of uh, were, were, were sorted. I think, you know, scheduling wise, we because it was a, a lower budget production, um, not not to say that the quality on screen is um, uh, you wouldn't be able to tell by the quality on screen. We did a 4K sort of Dolby Atmos soundtrack in, in the cinema. So it looks like a big production. Um, but only having 18 days, I think that was a definite challenge. So we decided to drop the Burning Man scene initially, knowing that we could come back and give that our full attention. And, uh, you know, so that was a separate shoot. Um, but it, it worked really, really well. And the grading team in post actually made that seamless. So um, we're really proud of working with these guys, you know. So Mark, last question for you. I think about just getting food, craft services, what have you to these locations. I'm sure there's probably people have to sign off on insurance and there has to maybe be a nurse on site. Do you have to do all these sort of union things or can you sort of fly by the seat of your pants? Uh, no, no, we had insurance, insurance and double, ins triple insurance actually on the Burning Man scene because I think we got there on the morning um, and we found out that our previous insurance wouldn't actually insure us. And I was like, why not? And I repeated back, wait, we're, we're going to set a guy on fire. He's going to run over to the swimming pool with a whole team of uh, steady cam chasing him. And I thought, oh, my God, this is, this is actually quite dangerous. And uh, we, we ended up speaking with a great insurance, performance insurance, and they in, uh, insure the big companies. Uh, and they said, yep, yeah, no problem. You know, make sure the guy's insured. Sure that uh, Dave Anders, our stunt guy, is off. You know, a seasoned professional, so he's done stuff like Bond and all the Harry Potter stuff. So, um, and we actually used him. Double, you know, we actually used him as an actor as well as the stuntman because Dave said, like, you know, he he delivered. Um, so yeah, and we had all the insurances and food. We had a great catering company who deliver remotely. So every day they would bring like ten boxes of lasagna, and I think we cater for five, six, seven 
food types, you know, vegan, vegetarian, nut free, you know, uh, for small production, people are like, you know, can we, can we, can we, can we move in? You know I mean? We, 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 we fed them all the time. We gave them chocolate biscuits and multiple teas and stuff. I think they were just sort of, you know, so I think that we looked after the crew. It's really, really important for our first production. We started off on that foot, um, you know, and, uh, and, and of course, you know, we, I don't think we would ever be in the situation of being in the seat of our pants and, uh, you know, and taking risks. You know, there was one stage where one of our lead actresses wasn't insured to drive. So, Within two hours, we found a low loader. And that was it. We kind of did it the proper way. <laughs> Why not, right? It's all come to fruition. The yeah. finished project, Sacrilege, is out today. A video on demand from Devil Works and Bad Blood Films. We've been speaking with David Creed and Mark Kenna. Gentlemen, congratulations on the film. Let's catch up on your next one. Thank, Thank you very much, man. Look forward to it. All right. I'm Rick Tittle. Come on back. Salesporttalk.com.